Toyota Corolla E120 is the ninth generation of the model. The accumulated experience has made it possible to create a balanced and reliable car that is mega popular. More than 40 years of production and more than 40 million sales is an excellent indicator. But is everything so rosy in the secondary market? Doesn't the Corolla E120 hold any surprises about which the fans of the brand are silent? Let's sort through all the advantages and disadvantages of the model. Body corrosion resistance of the body is at a good level, as for Japanese cars. Zinc layer 5 to 15 microns. For comparison, on the Audi A4B6 of the same years of production, a layer of only 2 to 10 microns. Without mechanical damage, it does not rot. Although age takes its toll, and on cars of the first years of production, small pockets of rust at the joints may already appear. In 2001, the manufacturer updated the paintwork of the Corolla 120. The body can be in three variations, sedan, hatchback, and station wagon. For the U.S. market, the E120 came with a redesigned design. Body parts from American are not always suitable for European Japanese versions. Corolla E120 engines, the 120th engine, cannot boast of a variety. From gasoline for Europe, Toyota supplied 1.4 and 1.6 liter engines. They differ only in volume and power of 95 and 109 horsepower, with, respectively. In America, the Corolla E12 was sold with a 1.8 liter engine. Offers with American in the secondary market no more than 10% of the total number on sale. Sometimes there are charged Corollas in the T-Sport configuration with turbocharged 1.8 liters for 189 and 215 horsepower. But they are very rare and almost always right-hand drive or exorbitant price. Technically, 1.4 liter engines. 1.6L, 1.8L are almost the same, with similar problems and features. In fact, they differ in the size of the crankshaft and piston stroke. The ZZ engine series is equipped with a timing chain drive with a passport service life of 150,000 kilometers, but in fact, a chain with a tensioner rarely changes until it rattles. The replacement period can be delayed up to 200, and in some cases up to 300,000 kilometers. All engines in the 120th Corolla love to eat oil. This is especially true for 3ZZ until 2005. The manufacturer got a jam with oil scraper rings and piston design, which he eliminated after 2005. In older engines, replacing pistons and rings with modernized ones helps, but this pleasure is not cheap. Checking the engine oil level once a week on the Corolla E120 is a must. ZZ motors also have their own trick of vibration at idle. Moreover, it is quite tangible and is transmitted to the entire body. This problem cannot be treated. But the symptoms can be removed if you increase the load on the engine, that is, turn on the headlights and air conditioning. Sometimes refueling with better quality gasoline helps, since the electronics of the car are sharpened for negative 4 euro standard fuel. Corolla E120 engines do not have hydraulic lifters. This means that you need to manually adjust the valve clearances every 100,000 kilometers. This procedure is dreary, and there are few sensible specialists, so few people in practice adjust the valves on time. The exception is the one. 5 liter which was used only in right-hand drive Corollas for the Japanese market, this motor with hydraulic lifters. Diesel engines of the total mass of ads for the sale of Toyota Corolla E120, cars with diesel engines account for only 3%. Advantages, good traction on bottoms and fuel consumption of 5 to 7 liters in the city. Drawbacks, potential problems with the costly common rail fuel system. 1.4L was equipped with a Bosch fuel system, a completely reliable system with a resource of 250 to 300,000 km 2.0 L with injection system from Denso. Reliability is higher, but in the event of a breakdown, repairs will cost two times more. Both engines are quite reliable, but one refueling with low quality fuel can lead to costly repairs. Don't forget about natural wear and tear. After 300,000 runs, all engine systems are at risk. 
Near motor nuances, the knock of the intake manifold flap often worries Corolla owners of the first years of production. A plastic plate is installed inside the collector to adjust the vortex flows. With age, it exfoliates and begins to knock on the wall of the intake manifold. It is solved by replacing the collector or screwing in a self-tapping screw. Often this knock is confused with the clatter of a stretched timing chain. The starter Bendix usually lasts no more than 100,000 km signs. When starting, the starter works every other time or buzzes, and the engine does not scroll. The part is inexpensive and easy to change. The alternator bearing will also have to be changed after 200,000 runs. Gearboxes, the first 250,000 runs of the classic 4-speed automatic Eisen U340E can be even more reliable than mechanics. Subject to human operation without a ragged ride and frequent slippage. If during a test drive you hear a hum from the automatic transmission, then you can immediately prepare $500 to $600 for the repair of the front planetarium. If you leave it as it is, then you can get to replace the entire box. The weak point in the Corolla E120 manual transmission is the shaft and third gear bearings. After 150,000, they may hum and require replacement. Bearings are cheaper than the replacement work itself. But such a breakdown is more a consequence of improper operation than a pattern. Not everyone remembers changing the oil in a manual transmission every 50,000 kilometers. A robotic multimode machine is quite rare. It is better to bypass it because it works twitchy and breaks often. Steering the steering rack of the Corolla E120 is famous for its knock. It could occur after 60,000 runs. This did not affect the steering, but the driver's nerves very much. Replacing the entire steering rack does not guarantee getting rid of the problem forever. Therefore, Craftsman came up with a cheaper alternative in the form of replacing worn-out plastic bushings inside the rail. The procedure is not simple, but in the end, the knocking problem goes away for a long time and it will cost significantly less than replacing the entire rail. Detailed instructions for replacing bushings with dimensions. Particularly economical ones do not even grind new bushings, but simply wrap the old ones with foil. And according to reviews, even this is enough for 50,000 kilometers. The hydraulic booster can be fully hydraulic or electrohydraulic. In terms of reliability, the former is preferable. Suspension the chassis of the 120th Corolla is simple and therefore does not cause any special problems. Front classic McPherson strut and rear semi-independent beam. With original spare parts, the suspension resource is enough for 100 plus km after repair. Everything depends on the quality of the installed spare parts and the concentration of pits in the region where the machine is used. The bushings and stabilizer struts are the first to die. And to 100,000 kilometers, the silent blocks of the front levers are already being pulled up. Wheel bearings are not very durable, they rarely go more than 100,000 kilometers. The brakes of the Corolla E120 are disc brakes, with a standard resource for most cars, which greatly depends on the driving style. By 150,000, a brake cylinder repair kit may be needed. Corolla E120 is a pretty simple car. It does not have an abundance of complex electronics, a simple suspension without much experimentation. Only the engine turned out a little damp. Due to this simplicity and reliability has reached a high level. Although, as always, the decisive factor when buying a used car is the quality of service of the previous owner S. If you manage to find a well-groomed option with a mileage of up to 200,000 kilometers, then you can safely take it. The resource is enough for the next 100 to 150,000 runs. In other cases, before buying, you should once again weigh the pros and cons. Especially given the inflated average cost in the secondary market due to the image and popularity of the model.